So now that we've got the, uh, the basic structure of the site in place, uh, you can see I've created three distinct areas for this tool rental site. There's the admin area, and they'll be able to add new salespeople, other admins, and then do the same thing that everyone in sales can do. I have new sales, or I have a sales area. They'll be able to rent the tools, add new tools, add new customers, those kinds of things. And then I have customers, and they'll be able to log in, see their account, see what tools they have checked out, uh, those kinds of things. If you look at the security, I have three users uh, already set up in three different roles. So for roles, I have admin, customer, and sales. And then for users, I have Mike Admin, and if we check his role, he's an admin, customer, sales. Okay, So I've got just a really basic infrastructure in place. If I look at this in the browser, all right, I've used the site map to, to make my three areas. Uh, customer, okay, I can get into the customer area, I can get into the unauthenticated users area, but I can't get into the others without logging in. Uh, and I've set all this up through the web config file, so I've allowed in the admin area, I've allowed the admin. I've denied unauthenticated users, and I've denied sales and customer. And you can see how this is set up in the customer area. Everyone can get in except unauthenticated users. And in the sales area, sales and admin can get in, but the customers can't get in there, and unauthenticated users can't get in. So I've set up the security, I've logged in with my three different users, I've checked everything out. Uh, it all looks good uh, so far. So what I want to do now is start to create uh, some pages. I'm going to work with the users uh, first. If I want to have a customer's table and I want the customers to be able to log in, there could potentially be two different things going on. Um, I can have uh, uh, through the ASP roles membership. Let's get that up. I have all of these tables that were already created for me. So when I create a new user that can log on to the system, they're going to have a username, a password, those kinds of things in here. But there's no good way in here to collect information like address, uh, telephone number, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to add an, another table uh, in here to collect all that kind of information and then associate it with a user account. Uh, and by doing that, now the user can log in and we'll be able to collect all of their uh, information like their address and, and those kinds of things. If we didn't do it this way, we would have two distinct things going on. We would have their account information with their address and all that, and then we would have their user account that contained their password and their user ID and those kinds of things. Uh, so it would be two different things to manage. So we're just going to try to tie those together. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new table uh, for the column name, I'm going to kind of call it user ID and you'll see why here in a minute. Data type is unique identifier and I'm going to disallow nulls. Uh, I'm going to collect first name. And here I'm going to, uh, I've got the information set up, collect first name, last name, the city, and the state. Uh, the state only needs to be two. I'm going to make this user ID the primary key. So I only have one null in the whole thing, a city. You add as many fields as you need to add. I'm going to save this table. I'm going to call it 
TR for tool rental uh, user profile. All right, so I have my user profile table set. Now this user ID, we're going to tie into the user ID here. Okay, this this one, user ID. We're going to make that a primary key, uh, make that a foreign key relationship, uh, so that we can associate this Mike admin account with the the specific role here in the user profile. So to do that, let's get back into the design of the user profile table. I'm going to right click relation, right click here and select relationships, add. Tables and column specifications. Okay, here's the foreign key, table row, user profile, user ID. I'm going to select users and the key user ID. Okay, so now I have established that uh, uh, relationship, that foreign key relationship between the two tables. I want to scroll down here to insert, update, and delete. For the delete rule, I want to cascade. So what happens now if the user account that has the username and password for login purposes, if that gets deleted, it will automatically come over and delete the corresponding row out of the user profiles. And I'll save that, save all of this up. So user profile, now I'm going to go ahead and fill in a little bit of information here. Uh, let's do uh, like admin Iowa city IA. I need to get this user ID. This is from a Mike admin account. For Mike Admin, I'm going to grab the user ID. I'm just going to simply copy it. And paste it in here. Okay, and then let's do the Mike Customer account. we'll do the sales okay so I've done I've populated the table with the corresponding user ID key all right I just had to do that in this first uh, a little bit here to get started with those three accounts. After that, I'm going to fix it so that it writes everywhere. Uh, what, so you do one save and then uh, the writing will happen across all the different tables. All right, so we've got all this saved up. Things look good there. The last thing I want to do is import uh, a list of all the states. Import data. Data source, I'm going to choose an Excel spreadsheet. Postal codes, this is just simply a spreadsheet uh, of all the different uh, possible states like AL, AK, AR, MO, IA, uh, and whatnot. I'm going to set it into the Apollo, into this particular database.
50 rows transferred. You refresh. And I can see the table down here, so I'm going to rename it. I like to put a TR underscore in front of all the tables I create. That lets me know they're part of my tool rental application. It just keeps them all together. Now, if I look at this, I can see it's just simply a list of states. Nothing, nothing too fancy. All right, so this takes care of the database uh, end, I believe, for uh, our user for the user piece. So now we need to switch over to Visual Web Developer and start actually uh, programming against this database.